It's early January, the sun is shining, the seas are mellow, and Lauren, Trevor, and I have left Porta Escondido after being held up for several days, waiting on a stiff norte wind and getting over some horrendous food poisoning. While still moored in the protected anchorage, we had the opportunity to explore the beautiful Steinbeck Canyon. It's speculated that John Steinbeck himself visited this place on his journey documented in the book Log from the Sea of Cortez back in 1940. It's a wonderful scramble through large river boulders that can be easily accessed from the marina without the need of a car. Our sail started out slow, but the wind picked up perfectly as we neared the northwest end of Isla Carmen. It was so fun to watch Lauren on the helm, piloting Sea Dream of Clyde with confidence and contentment into a beautiful anchorage where we spent the night. Okay, just as sunset's happening, we're about three miles out. It feels like we've been three or four miles out for like an hour because I think we have. That's the nature of tacking, which I'd almost forgotten about, this tacking business. The sky's beautiful. We're on Isla Carmen at this beautiful anchorage here, straight across from Loreto, Bandia, I think it's called, and just heading uh, to shore to go stretch our legs. Both Kat and I are feeling a lot better couple boats in here, lots of solar, it's good good vibes today. And uh, Lauren's just uh, paddling back down this uh, this lagoon that he's been in, so I'm interested to hear about that. We might go check it ourselves. Work on his sun hat shape a little. Yeah. So we're gonna go up this little lagoon here. Water's really cold in here. The nights have been quite cold, I think like down to like seven or something celsius this uh, shallow water probably cooled off quite a bit compared to the ocean the wind's pushing us up we hardly even have to paddle just steer a little bit so we're pretty up here Okay, so after about maybe half a kilometer, the uh, end of the line here from the water, but we're just gonna walk up the river bed. It's really fluffy sand here. Some pretty classic Baja riverbeds. I don't know that there are any rivers that run year round in this part of the, the world, but they definitely run when there's storms or thunderstorms and things in the summertime. So here back in the little estuary lagoon thing, there's um, these little um, basket weaved kind of nests, I think, bird nests, there's two, there's a newer one, an older one, but um, you can see sort of an entrance in here, up here, and then the rest of it, the older one there, pretty neat. Mm -hmm. So it would appear the birds here don't like music, so don't use your stereo with the birds here, okay folks? Please, wear your bracelet. Yeah, wear your bracelet. <laughs> the cat seems to have her energy back, and I'm just gonna walk behind her. She wants to lap the little route we're gonna do up to this ridge twice. But anyways, it's beautiful along here, checking out the mangroves, the roots are sticking out now the water's drained. After a couple of nice days at Carmen Island, we're heading out now that the Norte's mellowed out. We're just going to head off to Coronado. Like we got a Dorado on the line. Lauren's gonna take this one. We just rolled in the Genoa to slow down. We were going a little over five and a half knots. And now we're going just about two knots, which will make it a lot easier to reel it on in. <laughs> on the line, buddy. That's a good sized Dorado. Oh no. But... Joke it. Aww. Aww. 
probably about, I don't know, 50 feet from the boat and he shook it right at the last minute. Bummer. We'll try again. We're just coming up to Coronado Island here, the south anchorage that uh, protects us from the northerlies are blowing right now. And we are going to attempt the old sail on anchor. Nice spacing and it's a gentle depth, so let's give it a shot. We'll, uh, a little bit out. Uh, we're in about 24 feet right now. Okay, let's tack. I'll bring the Genoa in as we do that. Alright, got it. Well, it's not the warmest evening, but it's a little better than back in British Columbia right now. It's minus 10. I'm okay missing that this year. They're coming right to the boat, Cat. Wow. Like right to the boat. Dolphins. Let's go, the whistle. Yeah. So we've just landed on this beach right here, and there are at least 10 gulls. Um, so we gotta be really careful here that we don't invoke an attack by them. These gulls can be pretty um, tenacious when they want food, you know. I wonder if they're nesting or something. It's not the right time of year, but... Here's a little spot that I came to when I was 22 kayaking with my buddy Ryan Masson on one of his tours. His family had a business down here. I remember this little spot, it's beautiful. Ooh, it got warm for a sec. Dude. Okay, so we have not had any luck fishing just by jigging in the dinghy. So we're gonna pull anchor up and go sailing for a little while and troll for Dorado. There's a spot where the pangas have been hanging out not too far from here that we're gonna go troll over top of for a while. It looks like it presumably is the good spot. some pretty fun little uh, day sail action. The first time we've day sailed in a long time. So hopefully we catch a fish out of the deal. Otherwise we just get a nice sail. Two of them. Oh! Wow. Yeah, it's just <laughs> so fun to be able to do that. That's crazy. 
And Dolphin's doing tricks. They must be so happy. Whoa! <laughs> We're doing another hike here on Coronados Island. I'm gonna head up to the volcano. Cat and Lauren did it the other day, but I stayed back and worked on video editing, relaxing after being a bit sick. I'm looking forward to checking this out now. Big enough. The ground around here is all old coral and shells and things. I think it's an old sea level here. And we're just about to get above it into the volcano zone. So as soon as we got in this volcanic stuff, it sounds like we're walking on like metal it's really neat the sound so we're just about the steep part heading up the volcano here last little bit the trail kind of at times it's hard to see where it is with all the rocks and stuff but it's pretty easy going really you can just go up and you'll find it eventually So after lots of low angle stuff, it just gets super steep all of a sudden. Not really a trail, it's kind of a route straight up the hill here. Leave the summit, it's windy up here. Very loose and dirt fast on the way down here. So just a minute ago, while we are still a little bit up the hill, we're like, Huh, the boat seems kind of like further out now, or man, maybe it's just the angle. And then we got a call from uh, Kat's brother, Lauren. He's like, hey man, we're, we dragged. We're like 60 feet of water now. He's inquiring on how to, what to do. So he, luckily he was quick and put out some road and the boat's staying put now. It must've been some gusts or something, but anyway, so we'll uh, fire the engine up here and bring the boat back, back to where it's supposed to be. Obviously we got a little too casual last night, not putting enough road out, not really checking it while sailing on the anchor in the calm conditions, but here we go. Come here, dolphins. Let's see, anchor chain. I have a chain, it's funny, isn't it? Yeah, it's sting, little stingrays everywhere. There's one little tiny one, see? Lauren was scheduled to fly home the next morning, so we made the short hop south to Loretto where, due to the mellow conditions, we were able to anchor out. It was such a treat sharing this experience with my older brother. For me, this thousand mile journey wouldn't have been possible without the emotional support of my family, and being able to have a comfy sea adventure home all set up for him and Zaya to experience the fruits of mine and Trevor's labor made the harvest that much sweeter for us too. Our time together was so easy and present. And with that, and Lauren proposing to Zaya, this trip was really a deepening of all of our relationships and a fun way to sail into our future families together. So there's a dinghy dock here, but you gotta pay a pretty expensive price. For one person, it's uh, 170 pesos, so like uh, $10 American. And with all of us, I think it would've been like 250 or 300 pesos or something. So we've been using the paddle board for today because we're not bringing any cargo really here in Loretto. It's a gorgeous sunset tonight and pretty calm. That's why we're anchored here. You can only really anchor in front of Loretto when it's really calm out or if it were happened to be a westerly blowing because it's yeah, northeast and south is completely exposed here at Loretto. So that's why we're here now. And it happens that Lauren is headed flying out tomorrow. So that worked out that we didn't have to go to Porto Escondido to drop him off. Okay, we are leaving Loretto. We just dropped off Lauren and he's on his way back to America. And we're heading about nine miles south to go anchor up by uh, our friend Pat Pierre for a couple days. Playing our game called Sneak Up on Martin, our buddy on the Centaur. Epically pleasant sailing right now. We're just cruising along at three knots. Nothing wrong with that. We're only going 10 miles today, so well on our way already. And this is just the kind of stuff we've been looking for. Warm, chill sailing. Here we are. Funny. Oh, you just showed us a picture. 
You see us? Yeah, he took a picture. Uh, just as I was filming this, we got a text from Laura and a, a, of a picture of us from the airport, and uh, he just took off. Now we see the Alaska Airlines flight. After Lauren left, we paused video recording for the most part and settled back in to it just being the two of us aboard. We relaxed and leaned into the simple life. After close to four months of being on the go, having a schedule to keep, we were finally free to chill at anchor and not sail anywhere if we didn't want to. So that's what we did. We spent so much time dreaming of this, and it was here for us to savor and enjoy. Day after day of sunshine and perfect temps, incredible scenery, abundant wildlife, great fishing, and of course the wonderful locals make this area such a treat to spend time in. And we were so fortunate to have the opportunity to do so. Having family aboard was the perfect way to start out our time in the Gulf of California, and we were so happy to have had the chance to make it happen so early in our trip. Thanks for watching, and bye for now.